Hello, all you beautiful people. I need to fix this mic. I keep moving, Dana. This isn't going to be a podcast. This is a quick article snippet. A uh, uh, quick take of this. Now, there was going to come a time where, when it came to independence from this union, it didn't matter who was calling for independence. It was going to get scrutinised. No, the f- we've passed scrutiny, way past that. As you can see with this article from The National, it's not the only article you'll find uh, quite a few. There's the Scottish Independent, I'm sure The Guardian's got one on this. But I'm primarily tackling this one because they're all the same. This is from The National f- for, it's a Welsh paper. And as you can see here, Rishish Sunak's extremism plans attack Welsh and Scottish independent campaigners. This was put up on the 3rd of August. We are on the 7th, so I'm, I'm behind. But it's gave a few days for a couple more news articles to put it out. So this is out there for the public's eye now. Um, it's up to us to scrutinise, but it gets better. As you can see, it was to attack independents. Now, if we scroll down... You see here, Rishish Sunak's plans to treat those who vilify Britain as extremists could criminalise supporters of Welsh and Scottish independence. A counter-terrorism expert warned. Now, if I grew up during the war on terrorism, it was 9-11 happened when I was a child, and from then it's been in the, the public eye, terrorism. That's all we hear about now. It's if you if you want to get your point across on something, you need to add terrorism to it. That's it, plain and simple. That's the only way you'll get attention aimed in it. And this vile, disgusting man, Sunak, is one of them. He is playing the terrorism cards right now. Now he is one of two runner ups to become Prime Minister, him and Liz Truss. Spoke about that woman as well. You know my feelings on that reptile. But this man, he is, the last week or so, two weeks, has really dug a hole for himself. If you go into my TikToks, or just go on TikTok and type his name in, you will find a ton of videos of him being caught out, clear as day, really just being against the people, the masses. He has for years tried to play this card that he was, he's for everybody. But there is clips out there. I might even have to make a compilation, depending on how how nasty I'm feeling. Showing this, he'll get a wee compilation video of his, his stupidity, because he really is, he's a stupid man. Money, money fuels his life. His wife as well, she's corrupt. They're all corrupt, they're all corrupt, they're all linked. But this here just solidified it for me. The former Chancellor has announced he intends to change the definition of extremism if elected as Tory leader to allow people with an extreme hatred of Britain to be put through the anti-terrorism prevent programme. I'm pretty sure that meant to say prevention programme. The proposal has sparked a huge backlash. Of course it will, because... Um, We're not fucking idiots. With human rights organisations warning it will further clamp down on fundamental rights of freedom and and of expression. And politicians describe it as a new law for the Tory leadership contest. It is a new law. It's an absolute new law. You've got to attack people that really just want... They want to control their own stuff. That's it. This ain't no longer a union. It's... It's a... it's a hostage situation, isn't it? It kind of starts to it's starting to feel like that since the indie referendum. We had it's the Hodden is captive. According to a report in the Telegraph newspaper, sources in the Sunak camp camp. I don't know if we should be saying that because this man, this man made a racial joke uh, towards it towards himself, and it didn't go well. The only ones that laughed were the racists. Right, the only ones that laugh were the racists. It's probably good we didn't have a camera view of those laughing, otherwise they would be getting it right now. To further clamp down on fundamental rights of freedom of expression, politicians describe it as a new law for the Tory leadership contest. According to a report in the Telegraph news paper, sources in the Sunak camp 
believe his extremists do not want to attack the UK values, but also the country's very existence. No one, no one's, the only ones attacking England are the petty ones, the only ones attacking England are the uneducated, the only ones attacking Britain are the ones that are, that are terrorists, right? That's what he wants you to think, but it's, it's not about that, it's not about that. When did it become a crime to just want to own everything that, that, that belongs to you? Right, I try and not talk about independence a lot because it causes a lot of trouble. But this, this is taking the cake. Right, we are Nicola Sturgeon's Houghton, 2023. October 1st, pardon me, 2023 is going to be it. This is it. This is our next referendum. But this clown here, he's hoping by then we're all locked up. All the indie ones are all locked up. He wants us all locked up. It's like China. China with its anti-Muslim campaigns. Now, there's another article talking about how they're going to how Sunak and MI5 are working on upgrading their programme for domestic as well as international terrorism, especially Islamic. So I might do an article, uh, we talk on that one, but this really, it gets worse. So Dr. Maria Norris, Assistant Professor in International Relations at Coventry University, told The National this was an attack on independence campaigners. Now, I need to stress this further. When you read this article, it gets kind of convoluted after this part because our dear doctor here, mm, from my personal point, I believe she's she's she can't stick to one side, and this is about to show up. That is very very telling of those who have argued for and campaigning for Scottish independence or Welsh independence or Irish reunification. They do want the United Kingdom to stop existing as it currently is, she said. So, in those two sentences, those two sentences, she's changed. She's jumped from one opinion to the other. In one opinion, people shouldn't be attacked for wanting independence. And on the other hand, she's saying, no, 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 no. But we do need to because they're not only attacking us, they're attacking the country. Make up your mind. Who are we? Who are who are these people that are wanting independence? Who are we? Who are we attacking? Because personally, I thought we were attacking the politicians because they're the ones stopping it. It's not our fault. Majority of people are brainwashed or, or just don't read up on all the information to make a, an honest decision. People would rather just have it flung at them and they'll just accept it. That's the problem. Right now, people are just accepting what's being handed to them. They're accepting misinformation. They're accepting disinformation. They're accepting lies and that's the problem here this we're starting to get to a point we don't know we're tripping up our own feet as this doctor's doing here she added i think it's not a confidence i think it's not a confidence okay this is the language it's being used they talk about extremists attacking the uk as a country of its very existence as a country see she just again Bouncing right back. Two sentences ago, she made the same statement. She's just gone running circles. I've been researching UK counter-terrorism for decades. Aye, because it totally shows here, don't it? I'm an expert on terrorism and extremism, and this is not something you see from Islamic terrorism. Of course, you won't see it from Islamic terrorism because we're not in Islam. Okay? We are in the UK. Why are we making comparisons towards... Why are we, why are we taking people that just want independence and comparing them to people that want to see an entire culture, the Western culture, eradicated. How can we make a comparison between the two when the two of them don't fit the same critique? That's the problem. Now, the, we're getting smarter people with the advent of how easy it is to to put information on social media platforms. They're, they're freaking now. They're freaking. Because now their words can be taken and weaponized against them. And this is what it is. We're going to shut us all down. They're going to put us in radicalization camps. They're going to, they're going to send us there, just like China does with their, with, with their Mus Muslim populace, their Islamic people. They, they're throwing them in concentration camps. That's what it is. They're, they're throwing them into these de radicalization camps in hopes that we can brainwash them into just believing in Western customs, which is insane because we're we're all entitled to to our own beliefs in it. Uh, and systems and such. <sighs>
scary, scary to see this. It is an attack. Really, one knows that are campaigning for independence. Yes, it is. But again, why are you, why are you comparing independence campaigners to Islamic radicalists? Sunak's campaign has insisted the policy will not see people critical of UK government policy, referred for de-radicalisation, which basically means no politician will be touched. No politician is going to be touched. Regardless if you're on the left spectrum or the right of the spectrum, you are not going to be touched if you are a political party member, which, by the way, is... Mm, that leaves way for dictatorship. That leads us to fundamentalist dictatorship. It gives them the green light that if you are a member of parliament, you can say and do whatever you want and you will not be detained. That scares me, because they're the crazy ones, they're the ones we go to worry about, because they're the ones doing this. Not us. Oh, we're just all along for the right. But Norris, whose work focuses on, no, hear it, far-right extremism, UK counter-terrorism, white nationalism, said the definition of extreme hatred of Britain would be inherently subjective, which means it is totally up to the person involved in that situation to determine what it is. It's purely subjective, right? Purely up to the per whoever's reading it, their personification of it. That's what this is. And that's scary because if you listen to subjective stuff, you're more likely to hear lies because it's of the opinion of whoever's speaking. So if you, let's say, you get put up for being a radical and you're in whatever court system they put you in, see if that judge, see if that judge doesn't like the look of you and doesn't like what's being written about you, regardless if it's right or wrong, he, it's up to their discretion to sentence you, which means, see if I'm, me being Scottish, if I was getting done for radicalism and I was taken to a high court, see if that judge was English and pro-England, pro-Britain, and didn't like me just by my accent, just just totally attacking me on my nationality or my belief system. He wouldn't get done for it. It would be totally within his right to turn around and go, you're Scottish scum, you know nothing. By the way, spend six months in a, re a rehabilitation de radicalization centre. And that's it, I lose everything. And I presume that this will create a criminal record for folk as well. So, by the way, you'll probably never get a job now. You'll be branded a political terrorist. And that's it. Your life is totally ruined. She raised concerns. It is concerns. It is part of a systematic attack on dissent from the UK government in recent years, which it has. They've just slammed human rights. They do not care. The last two years should have proved that to you. Two years there should have proved they don't care. They want this the money. <sighs> Pointing examples such as changes in law around the right to protest and scrapping of the Human Rights Act. Yes, the Tories have been chasing after our Human Rights Act for yonks. And now, because you've got such groups as the Extinction Group, you've got BLM, you've got Antifa, these sh radicalist groups who are just in it for the mayhem. They've cut everybody's nose off despite the face. It's because of them and their weak little mentalities and their weak, selfish frame of mind. The whole world revolves around us. That's caused this. Thank you, you fucking idiots. Try swear less as well. The prevention, so we're here, she added, the prevention strategy from the very beginning has an element of being a crackdown on dissent, especially dissent coming from particular communities. Because prevent, what, this article is horrible, I'm sorry. I apologise for it, it's just crudely written, I don't know why. Prevent is an overgrown and counter-insurgency tactics used during the empire. Well, back to the British Empire, yes, because they used to line people up and shoot them and hang them for treason back then. Controlling dissent population that deemed to be descending. There's a lot of dissent used here. So there's an absolute, absolutely an element of that. No, there's not. Nobody's going to run cutting up people in charge. Nobody's trying to blow buildings up. Nobody's gone Guy Fox on MD. That's what you are talking about in this segment. 
Nobody's doing that. We're civilised. We're just we're just attacking use politics. So there's absolutely an element of that. Especially when we talk into account this is a government which is very much engaged in the culture war situation where they are very quick to paint those who are, for example, calling for better education regarding the empire slavery and as anti Britain. No, 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 no. If we can talk about the Americans and their slave labour, we should be able to talk about British slave labour. That's just how it is. Again, you're picking and choosing which part you want, okay? You don't mind talking about the, the Americans taking slaves, but when it comes to Britain taking slaves, you panic. The government goes, no, we can't do that, because then, then it would show our true colours. Then it would show. We are led by extremists, okay? Right-wing extremists. If anything, our government should be de-radicalised. I'm not even going to go into the rest of this, because it's... It goes on to Muslim now, and that's not what I'm here for. I'm, I'm not here for that. It's just jumped to Muslims, as you can see here. But this was just a quick snippet. The world's gone to hell, and if you get caught shit-talking the Tories, you're going to get put in a slammer. So all I'm going to say is, keep doing what you're doing, right? Because you're not in the wrong. Don't let these punks scare you. They're punks, right? They're punks. And they use the words, they're s sophisticated words to get to you. That's not how this is going to go. Keep doing what you're doing. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. And I will catch you at the weight section in these de-radicalisation. I'll be at the weights. I'll be at the weights working out. So come look for me. Ask for Boomer. But I hope you I hope you enjoyed this video. This was just a quick rant because it's blown my mind how quick we're, we're descending into just political turmoil. Our freedoms are gone. You can't say anything, you can't scratch your nose around why we're somebody going, that's radical, and they, they just try to paint you as a domestic terrorist. This is going to end nasty. The government is after his honour. He don't care. Let's not vote him in. Let's just not vote any of them in. Honestly, it would just be safer that way. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Go check out, check out my TikToks because I update more regularly on there than here. And I hope you all have a cracking day. Stay safe, stand tall, stand proud.